Despite being the world's most valuable company, many still do not own it. Is that true? You think? Many still don't yes. own Apple? Well, not, not everybody would own it. it, or it would be a lot higher than a trillion. Okay. okay. Uh, for those at home who might be tuning in, the question is simple. If you don't own it, Guy Adami, can you still buy it? Yes, and it's a big, it is a big deal. It is a huge deal. A trillion dollars is not to be trifled with. And we talked about this five or six years ago. We laughed at people that said that Apple will be the first trillion dollar company. Well, here we are now. So I do think it's a big deal, and it's a big deal because everybody's talking about it. Answer your question. Can you still own it? A trillion dollars isn't a finish line. It's a benchmark. So if you were to look at this company, not know the market cap, and just look at the fundamentals, you say, this is a screaming buy here. And I'm not going to pretend I've been some raging <laughs> apple bull. I have not. I've been bullish. Over the years, I've been bearish. As the market has been, by the way, Dan pointed out last night that you've seen drawdowns in the stock a number of times. But this is the way I look at it. Right now, Apple's scheduled to make $13.45 a share next year. That means their market multiple, the amount people will pay for their earnings, is $15.42, <clears throat> as compared with a market multiple, the S&P 500, of 18.1. I would submit, as they continue to move their product mix more of a services, where they have a recurring revenue stream and a growing revenue stream, maybe they should get a market multiple. If that's the case... You're talking about a stock that's somewhere around $245. Forget about the fact that the earnings number could actually grow, and the market might actually reward them with a higher multiple. So to answer your original question, yes, it's a big deal, and yes, I still think you can buy the stock. Yeah, I mean, listen, there has been multiple expansion. There's the stock we were talking about it 11 times a couple years ago, and I think a lot of that has come to the realization that this is going to be a 50, the service is going to be a $50 billion business. It's got higher margins than a lot of their hardware uh, business. I'll just make one point, you know, talk about about buying it here at an all-time high after it just broke out of a big, big range in a straight line, I think it's important to remember that there's three $800 billion market cap stocks that just made new highs after their earnings. It's Microsoft, it's Alphabet, and it's Microsoft. All of them pulled back after that breakout here. So I don't think you have to run out and buy this stock here. It was in a very nice long base for most of this year. We just got pretty much the all clear between now and the end of the year. I think there's probably a good shot, though. At some point, it retraces back towards that breakout level. And if you really have to own it for 2019, that's I think what you do. I think maybe more interesting is because it's such a widely owned and held name that if you do <laughs> own it uh, already, should you use this opportunity to take some profits in it, hitting a trillion dollar market cap? Um, well, it depends on what you think. I think it's not a trillion in a, in a vacuum. It's a trillion after those earnings, which I thought were really impressive. really impressive. And so for me. Not owning it, having the ego of, God, I've missed this, I looked at today and said, all right, I have this much alphabet, way overweight, <clears throat> hero Apple. If I were just coming to Apple today, looking at the metrics today, would I own it or would I continue to own it if I already did? I'm the not saying sell yes. the whole thing. So I'm saying, some, you know. So I bought some today, which was a difficult thing for me to do, to buy some. It's not a huge position. If I had a huge position, I would probably sell some today. But owning zero, I felt like I had to swap out of some alphabet into this. Just I, short term, I have guaranteed the top for anybody out there. You can set short or sell with impunity. It's going down tomorrow because I bought so some. So the answer to, I guess, my question and both of the questions we posed at the top is yes, right? If you don't own it, you can still buy it, Tim. And if you do own it and you own a lot of it, it wouldn't be such a bad idea perhaps to take a little bit off the table. Well, that's always the case and after a big run. But, but I, I think Karen brought up the point, which is what has changed since that number that it's not just that the price is higher, it's that the company has, first of all, showed you that they are delivering on that uh, diversification, the product mix, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think the fact that we're going into the strongest cycle or the period to own this stock into a new release, whether you're excited about what's going to happen in September or not with new products. And by the way, they did this in one of their historically weakest quarters. So um, I think it's easy to get out there and say, oh, trillion dollars. We're smart guys. Sell the facts. Sell the big number. I actually think that Apple right now, it's kind of like Guy and I, we talk about with Stairway to Heaven, is one of the most underrated, overrated songs. I think Apple is one of the most underrated, overrated companies right now because they are truly executing. I think a trillion dollars makes them harder to catch right now. I think R&D, I think in terms of the size, I think the pressure they put on their suppliers. Why is Apple weaker today? That's a trillion well, dollar company. It's stronger. Can I make one point? I mean, they have not grown iPhone units in the last four years. OK, so here's there's so, there's a lot of things that I think are really important to consider. So what are these big markets? They're emerging markets. OK, and we know from every U.S. tech company that their average re revenue <laughs> per user outside of North America is much lower in most every other region. So if their next growth area is going to be a much lower margin hardware place where they don't 
actually get the leverage of the ecosystem because of the services, then the story could be kind of dead for a little bit. China just, sales were up 19%, though, Dan. Tim Cook said the that's China's That's right. So, so Tim, and, how and much success have they had selling apps over the iTunes store in China? They're they selling don't. handsets. No, but, Aren't we but more worried about the is, hardware business? That's no, what I hear Facebook you talking about. Facebook can't be in there. Google can't be in there. Netflix can't be in there. So the one thing that they've been able to do in China is sell hardware. Okay? okay. So the idea of selling services in China... Isn't that the hardest part into a low-income population? And isn't that the bread and butter of the business? You're telling me the bread of the buzz, bread and butter of the business going forward is going to be services. I'm no, telling you no, that they're not going to be I able said to sell services. Diversification is good for this company. That's what changed for me. They've reaffirmed actually that they're broadening their business model. They're becoming possibly, um, I think, a, a first of all, the iPhone volatility. I actually think this is a much more predictable company. I see 250 billion dollars on their balance sheet that, to me, ensures over the next three years they're going to be buying back probably 20 to 25 billion dollars of they, stock. They pretty much buy back more stock than anybody else. They return more cash to shareholders than anybody else. They have the most cash on their balance sheet than anybody else. They have the highest market cap than yeah. anybody else. What's, what's they have the ability, the which life. many don't, to raise their prices as well, which offsets some of the softness that they could see and they have been <laughs> seeing in actual iPhone numbers. Well, Those higher ASPs. I'll just make one point before you go to Guy. I, I think it's astounding. They bought more stock back last quarter than they've ever bought when the stock was at all-time highs. In the last two quarters, they bought $43 billion. You think that's a sign but, of weakness? That's no, I, I don't. Saying. I'm just saying it. Can I finish? I'm just saying, it's We're pretty astounding. I'm just saying, it's pretty astounding. It obviously is a level of confidence about whatever the heck they're doing over there. They probably get penalized in terms of the valuation for their cash position. Karen can probably speak to this. I mean, if, I, if they were to put it to work without maybe buying back stock <laughs> and maybe buying a company where they could see some ridiculous growth, maybe that valuation would go higher. So I would submit, you're right, you have a quarter trillion dollars sitting around in terms of a cash position, it probably do works it? against them. Do they, do they them. need to do a big uh, I, I thought with five the cash. or six years ago, and we talked about this, they should have bought a Netflix. I get it. I mean, I, I know. Yes, I, mean, I, I hear you. Things they that should have sailed. Done. Maybe what that do they do sailed. now? What well, do they I'm do now? Like to, Dan's going to think I'm now? nuts. I, think, I happen to think that Square is not necessarily a hardware company. I think it's a technology company. Wouldn't it be, doesn't a Square just go so nicely with it with the Apple products? I mean, that wouldn't be a crazy acquisition. You're probably talking about a $40 billion deal, and that could be tremendously creative for them going forward. What about the money? Should they make a big acquisition? They haven't made yeah, one yet. Yeah, so, well, way. sorry. Beats. I mean, that was the what was that? Right. Beats was dollars? the biggest that one. Beats, Apple Music. That's nothing. Yeah, but but if you say, okay, they've now hit a trillion. Let's look at the next, you know, five-year trajectory for the company and the stock. Do they need a big acquisition? Do they need to deploy some of that overwhelmingly large amount of cash uh, for the next five-year milestone? Right now, this seems to be working pretty well yeah. for them. I don't know that they need... What I, what I don't really love is them spending a ton of money on autonomous driving. I feel like they're really late to that. See, I disagree with money. that. I, I, okay. I just saying, I'm not surprised you disagree no, with no, what I'm I, saying, I, but I, I want to... I actually it. think that, that that's anything related to AI and autonomous, I think this is like the, the, this is the next real platform for them. I mean, I, so... But so how do they me, get an edge there? What's that? How do they get an edge there? Well, they have Siri that had like 100 billion search. I mean, when you think about all the different things, how are you going to monetize autonomous fleets? I, mean, I see future? how Uber does it. Be... I see how Tesla does it. I'm not sure how, well, how Google's Apple made a does huge it. push there. Alphabet right, and they've with been Waymo. way ahead. Their Waymo just, is way ahead. We're in the first ahead. pitch of the first inning of, of autonomous. We're in the first pitch of the first inning. So if you say to yourself, think about this. iPads are gone, okay? Right now, we have the, their other products, which are wearables. It's the AirPods and it's the, um, and the watch. It's greater than the combination of Macs and iPads. So iPads going to be gone at some point too, right? So this is a company that needs to continue to replace their second biggest product. If you take the iPhone ecosystem and you take all the stuff that's surrounded it, that is one product. And I don't think they want to be the one product company forever. So and what's the, the next only, thing? The only thing here's Here's all I'll say about what we know right now is not only do I agree with Karen saying it's not broken, it's very not broken, but also they've got two things. They've got a brand that's untouchable. So they are the largest consumer products company in the world. That means loyalty. Uh, and again, that installed base of a billion phones, which you talk about all the time. Uh, to me, that is something this company has to do nothing right now. It, it, the ball's in their court. They, they can hang loose.